Hello, tenors. What happened with the 2020 census? Do elephants get lonely? And what does sibling rivalry look like between pro athletes? I'm Bethany Van Delft, and we'll get into all this and more on today's The 10 News, the show where in the time it takes to beat your brother in a game of floor is lava, we find out what's up in the world. Okay, let's get into the 10 news. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This week, many families are celebrating Kwanzaa, a seven-day non-religious holiday that honors African-American culture and heritage. Did you know that Kwanzaa was first created in 1966 by a professor of Pan-African Studies, who wanted it to be a celebration of family, community, and social values. To all of you who celebrate, happy Kwanzaa. In an earlier episode of the 10 News, we learned about the U.S. Census, the once every 10 years event where every single person living in the U.S. and its territories is counted. Recently, the Supreme Court decided to postpone making a decision about whether undocumented immigrants should or should not be counted in the census. It's a big deal because the numbers help determine how resources get distributed to communities, as well as how many seats states have in the House of Representatives and their number of electoral college votes. We'll have to wait and see where this decision goes, but in the meantime, let's revisit our previous story from correspondent Pamela Kirkland all about the 2020 census. It happens once every 10 years, and it's old, like, really, really old. But it's also something very important that every person living in the United States is encouraged to participate in. What am I talking about? It's the census. But what is it? And why should you care if you're counted? We asked Alex and her mom, Yasmin Naboa, who know an awful lot about it, to make sense of the census. Hi, I'm Alex. I am a student and I'm 12 years old. Hi, my name is Yasmin and I am Alex's mom. And I became interested in the 2020 census um, via some work that I was doing at Count the Nation, which is associated with the USC Annenberg Innovation Lab. What exactly is the census for people who don't know? So it's a survey that happens once every 10 years of everyone who lives in the United States. For example, they count newborns, children, teenagers, adults, teachers, parents, and grandparents, basically everyone. The first census is in 1790. That's a long, long time running. And why does the census count matter? The census data matters for kids and families because this is how the government gives money to our communities based off the number of people who live in a city or state, also called their population. The money pays for funding for our schools and teachers, libraries, parks, health clinics, breakfast and lunch programs at some schools, and college scholarship money for some students. The census money pays for a lot, which is why it's important for our family to participate and for all of us to be counted. The census numbers also determine how many representatives go to Washington, D.C. to represent us in our needs. So I live in California, and there are almost 40 million people who live in the state, which is the largest population in the country. And California has 53 representatives out of 435. But this may change based off of the 2020 census numbers. Where did this passion for the census and the census count come from? Well, my mom would not stop talking about it because she worked on it. She got me super interested in it after the many times she's talked about it. Okay, mom. So how much were you talking about the census to Alex? (laughs) (laughs) A lot. And it's something that I wasn't really too aware of um, myself. I didn't realize how important it was to everything Uh, that we do and all the services that we use in our communities. So once I learned more about it, then I thought it was really important for uh, Alex to realize that and to be able to talk to her friends and her peer group about why it was important that everyone participates. If you are a kid, how do you participate in the census? 
So you can help your parents fill out the census online by going to my2020census.gov. It takes less than 10 minutes. If you aren't counted now, you won't be able to be counted for another 10 years. So it's super important. If a child is 10 years old and their parent forgets to count them, they can't be counted again until they're 20 years old. So the importance of being counted over the next 10 years really affects um, everyone's life every single day. So working together to make sure our communities and our schools are stronger by doing something that takes seven minutes uh, over the internet is something that I think we should all try to do. The younger generation has so much power and by just asking your parents to fill out the census can do like make a big difference and even just like going on the internet and researching it on your own can be very interesting and beneficial and you could tell your parents about it and at the end of the day it's it's a really good thing to do. The census count is currently closed and the next time it comes around in 2030 you may be filling it out yourself. Have you heard about the world's loneliest elephant? His name is Kavan, and he lived alone at a zoo in Pakistan for eight years. And that was until early December when Kavan was relocated to a Cambodian wildlife sanctuary. Reportedly, soon after arriving, Kavan reached out his trunk to another elephant who happily returned the touch. Kavan made a friend. Now he'll live with his new buddy and several other elephants at the sanctuary. You can see a photo of the two elephants holding trunks at the 10news.com. Oh my gosh. Whether it's taking each other down in Fall Guys or a race to the end of the block, siblings can sometimes get competitive. So what's it like when siblings are also professional athletes? Let's check in with our sports-tacular contributor, Kenny Curtis, to find out. Okay, sure, we all know that playing professional sports is hard. But playing professional sports against your brother or your sister? Well, that's even harder. Today, we're talking about some of the most famous sibling sets in sports history. Play ball! You can't talk about popular sibling athletes without mentioning Peyton and Eli Manning, two of the best NFL quarterbacks to ever play the game. There you go. Let's do it. Although they're now retired, they were both named Super Bowl MVP and are both predicted to be inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. While Peyton is commonly thought of as the better talent, Eli has an additional Super Bowl championship to hold over his big brother's head, so that might make family dinners a little bit awkward. I'm just hoping for some clean, competitive football. I don't even have a dog in this fight. But when it comes to famous sports sisters, no one can compare with tennis superstars Venus and Serena Williams. The two have had an intense rivalry for decades. In 2017, Serena beat Venus in the Australian Open and made history as the first woman to win 23 Grand Slam titles. Combined, the sisters have 30 Grand Slam singles titles and nine Olympic medals. The best part? They still refer to each other as best friends. It is definitely a strange situation to be in because no one else has been in the position that Serena and I are in. And I think, you know, all in all, the best part is that right now we're we're the best at what we do. Basketball has some impressive sibling pairs as well, including NBA superstars Seth and Steph Curry. As Seth steals it from Steph. In 2019, these two brothers played against each other in the Western Conference semifinal. Steph and the Golden State Warriors won the game, but both brothers still refer to that matchup as one of their all-time favorite sports memories. For us, uh, this will probably be one we'll have the, the, the film clip at home because this is a, a battle for sure. And yes, siblings are fun to watch when they play each other, but what about sports BFFs, huh? Turns out there are plenty of those as well. For example, LeBron James and Dwayne Wade have a legendary friendship despite being rivals on the basketball court. In baseball, Texas Rangers Adrian Beltre and Elvis Andrews had one of the best friendships in the league. The two were always goofing around together on the field and spent a lot of time together outside of baseball as well. In soccer, the U.S. women's national team is the epitome of hashtag friendship goals, and they actually refer to themselves as 23 best friends. 
Specific BFF pairs include Rose Lavelle and Sam Mewis, Julie Ertz and Crystal Dunn, and Mallory Pugh and Lindsay Horan, but it's forwards Alex Morgan and Sidney LaRue that have really upped their BFF game. The public side of their friendship includes entertaining pregame handshakes, social media, bikini post-offs, even a Halloween costume contest, but you also get the feeling that privately, they are really and truly good friends. At the end of the day, I think it's just nice to know that the athletes we watch on TV are just normal people with important relationships in their lives just like us. It's also nice to know that no matter what the final score is, brothers and sisters and friends always end up winners. It's trivia time. Last time on the 10 News, we asked you to name the episode where we told you which animal your sneeze could be in a race. We told you the answer could be found on our website. Was it A, trade your swimsuit for a spacesuit, B, a Mandarin hip hop masterpiece, or C, keep that pumpkin pie to yourself? Did you get it? The answer is C. It was our special episode about the coronavirus where we learned that when you sneeze, air can blow out of your nose at speeds faster than a cheetah. That's fast. Now for today's trivia question. A Dairy Queen drive through in Brainerd, Minnesota recently experienced what unexpected event? Was it A, 100 cars in a row were driven by funny clowns? B, 250 cars in a row were playing the same song on their radios, or C, 900 cars in a row paid for each other's meals. Did you guess it? The answer is C. It all supposedly started with one man asking if he could pay for the car behind him. That person paid it forward, and so did the next and the next until two and a half days later, over 900 drivers had participated in the gesture. You're kidding me. 900 kindnesses in a row. That's what the world needs now. Time's up. That's the end of the 10 news for today, but you can catch new episodes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The 10 News is a co-production of Small But Mighty Media in collaboration with Next Chapter Podcasts and distributed by iHeartRadio. The 10 News writing team is led by editorial director Tracy Crooks with contributions from Stephen Tompkins, Pamela Kirkland, and Kenny Curtis. The creative producer is Jenner Pasqua. Marketing is led by Jacob Bronstein with social media and web support by Stephen Tompkins and Adam Farr. Editing and sound design by Pete Musto, under the production direction of Jeremiah Tittle, executive producer Donald Albright, and show creator Tracy Leeds Kaplan round out the team. If you have questions about the show, a story idea, or just a fun fact you want to share, email us at hello at the 10 newscom And as always, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review The 10 News on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. I'm Bethany Van Delft, and thanks for listening to The 10 News. Now, go treat an elephant to some ice cream. How would you do that? I don't know. But do it. I bet the elephant would like it.